All right, so we're heading to Denver. Um, we're gonna be doing a shoot, um, but part of today is actually gonna be talking to you about a few tips that I have when it comes to starting a vlog, how to vlog, and really the most important piece is the storytelling. All right, so we're in Denver, and first tip, or at least aspect of this storytelling vlog, how to get started, how to get going. Well, first off, you need the equipment, but I don't want people to get wrapped up in the whole Oh, I need like a DSLR camera or I need, you know, something that's uh, really expensive. Well, you don't because most of us have something in our pocket and I'm actually going to be doing a vlog entirely on this Android device. I have a OnePlus 3T. I know there's a lot of iPhone vloggers out there and I do not use an iPhone. So for those Android lovers out there, um, I will be doing one. But so you obviously have your equipment dialed in batteries charged up but the big thing is we're talking about storytelling and I'm gonna bounce around a little bit um, when I talk about some of these things but first and foremost is who's your character who is in the vlog so today it's me and it's also Marie so we're here shoot we're here shooting um, today for our business uh, but you know I decided to kind of do this vlog at the same time now, sometimes I might have characters that are my kids, and they are characters, actually. Um, but so, it could just be you. And so, it doesn't have to necessarily be a bunch of people, it doesn't have to be your kids, it could just be you. That's why people are on your channel, they're watching your channel because they wanna know what's going on in your life. So, dial in on who your character is. All right, so now that we have the character, so you know who's in the vlog, so it's either you, you and your friends, you and your family, and then there's actually the setting. So it doesn't have to be anything glamorous. Like today, we've taken an opportunity uh, because it's a gorgeous day outside in Denver. We need to do some shooting for our portfolio, for our website. So for some business stuff, for some client work. But you could be like in your home office, you could be in your living room. Like just understand that when you're trying to tell a story, it just depends on what story you're telling and where you want to tell that story. So today, Yes, we're in interesting Denver. So like we're in a big city and you may not necessarily have access to a big city at that moment. And you know, all of this like cool artwork or well, or graffiti or whatever you want to label it as. Um, so don't actually get like, don't pull yourself back. Don't hold yourself back because you think like, oh, well, I don't have anything interesting as far as a background. I don't have this like cool city I can go vlog in because I know a lot of people, they watch these travel vlogs or you know they see these vloggers out there in these like great cities that have a lot of action going on. Again, your community is there for you and wants to know what's happening in your life and maybe it's just a talking headshot of you in your office, somewhere else in your house, talking about what's happening, a conflict, a story that you wanna share and that can be anywhere. So don't just get so hung up on the fact that it always has to be something interesting. Although when you do have an opportunity, and you've got a camera, which again, like I said, you have your camera in your pocket all the time or your purse or wherever you carry your smartphone. So you at any moment could start vlogging when you happen to be in a place that you don't normally go to. So that's just kind of the next thing. So character and your scene, what's your backdrop? Now, something else to consider is who your audience is. Now, if you've got a small channel, you're trying to build the channel while well, you're trying to build the audience, right? But I still think you need to stay true to who you are. Now, some people will say, or a lot of people will say, niche down and do like one thing or kind of have a very specific niche um, or niche. But I think one of the things that I, I certainly do, and maybe it's not what is recommended, but like I vlog about my personal life, like with my kids, my family, the hustle that we have. I also talk about the business stuff. And I think that's another thing too about entrepreneurship or just out, us out here building our portfolio. And so I think for me personally, because I think it has to speak to me because I have to be able, I need to feel passionate or like I can have a conversation with you about what it is that I'm doing and what I feel good about. And so even though I haven't necessarily niche down to some tight like subject matter like just talking about business or just talking about my family I just talk about what's going on in my life
All right, so another aspect of the vlog and part of the storytelling could be the B-roll that you get. Now, again, if it's like talking head stuff, like if you're in, like your, like I said, your home, your office, or that kind of space, like maybe there's some shots that you took, like I said, of yourself, of your kids, or whatever you're doing, and you could roll that into uh, the vlog itself. And but like today, like out and about, and so I can get that B-roll. But you would you would be pretty surprised. Like we just left this place called Roosters and got some coffee, and they were more than happy, more than willing to like let us film in there. You know, and I think. You kind of tell people like the story, like you have this vlog, or maybe you're working on a project, or you're you're doing something, and you and you certainly would love to promote them, whether that's through the vlog or whatever you're doing professionally. But again, you'd be surprised that people are probably pretty cool with you filming. But definitely make sure the space that you're getting the B-roll in, or if you're filming, that people are cool around you. Now, depending on the lens or the setup, I mean, again, when you're walking around with a camera. Um, hopefully things get blurred out in the background so that you don't pick up everything and I don't want to get into those details about you know what to record what not to record I mean that's probably a separate video but again when you're getting b-roll and you're in a restaurant or an establishment they may be pretty cool just like walk up to somebody and of course I definitely uh, would purchase stuff there like we bought coffee we bought pastries and stuff like that so like we were a customer there and I think that that's just you know a nice little you know give to them you know when you go in for the ask so kind of that exchange and and that's just something that I, I believe in and something that we've always done is just become a patron of the place and then they're a little bit more open uh, about us shooting in there all right and so one of the things that we have our character we have our setting you know, we have, like today is not a conflict. Today is actually just, like I said, we're sh out here shooting and kind of just sharing that story. So again, does the story follow a thread? Now, one of the things that I don't think you should be afraid of is think about your day. So like think about your day to day. And there, there definitely is a sequence. And I know with at least editing and the way that you can film, you can certainly put things in a sequence, but sometimes your day doesn't necessarily follow a standard sequence. So do think about the sequence, but at the same time, if something comes up, if something changes, if something's different um, in the story, like you kind of have to pivot a little bit because sometimes you're having a conversation with people and that's ultimately what you're doing is having a conversation with someone. And so you, maybe you pivot into something like, oh, that reminds me. So you may actually have to come over here and talk about something a little bit different. And then you actually get back to the storyline. But ultimately, I think globally, like it, it, it tells the, you know, the bigger story because again, your, se your day may not sequence perfectly. Okay, so a huge obstacle for people, um, especially in public, is putting a camera up in front of your face and talking to the camera. Now, I mean, here's the thing. I'm actually talking to you. I'm having a conversation with you. You're not here at the moment. Like, this is past me, ha having future me talk to present and future you. And so, actually, is there a DeLorean around here? But anyway, so you actually have people who will, you know, say, hey, Casey, what's up? Or say, hey, are you vlogging? I am, I'm vlogging here, hey. I'm vlogging here, see? So you actually have to get comfortable in front of the camera and just know that people are either, you know, enthralled or excited about it, about being in your vlog, or they don't even really care because somebody actually has their phone in front of them. You're watching this video, probably walking down the street. By the way, do not walk in front of the pole or out in the traffic or whatever. But people's lives are so hectic, so busy, and they have their phones in front of them. So they're likely gonna, it's like a fleeting moment. So they're likely just gonna like forget about you like four seconds later because it's whatever's on their phone after that. So anyway, just do it. Just put the camera in front of you. Doesn't matter if there's a crowd around. Somebody, you know, calls out and says, hey Casey, or hey vlogger, or hey, what are you doing? Or I wanna be in the shot. Just put, the camera up in front and just do it. See? Like this. There it is. So that's the thing. I think I was just saying, be in front of the camera, have a conversation. You're not here at the moment, but you will be once this is all published. And that's the way I think about it. I think about having a conversation with you whenever you're gonna be watching this. All right, and now I'm actually, I just remembered or I'm reminded of, when we talk about who your audience is, like 
what your niche is, who you're actually talking to. I mean, for me personally, so I have kids and they watch YouTube. And so where I'm going with this is like, definitely know who your audience is because I know that there are kids, like my kids' friends and their parents watching this vlog. So for me, I actually try to keep things on a level that's clean and, you know, PG or not really G, but you know, like I try to keep the language clean because I know more and more every day that my audience could be kids watching this. So for me, like I said, I try to do keep it clean and parents, I hope you appreciate that. Kids, I actually hope you appreciate that. So really to wrap it up again and the take home here is, you know, resolve the conflict have the conversation, tell the story, just do what you have to do. There may be those times like where the day goes on and it may be a to be continued. You may not actually know how to end the vlog. That does happen regardless of how much experience you have or how good a storyteller you are. There may be a few hiccups, just depends on the day. But on this one, we're gonna be ending with a tattoo. All right, so I actually got to jump in here really quick just to say, like I was just gonna end on that B-roll, but Skyler, the tattoo artist, super nice guy. They're all nice here, they're all amazing. Just met this guy, Thomas, who actually has a sneaker review channel on YouTube. He's walking around with a Panasonic G85 and he's got the Rode mic and we were just talking about vlogging and drones and he's got a Mavic as well. So anyway, super, awesome people here if you want to get some ink done if you want to get a tattoo done i mean seriously certified tattoo studios they are definitely just i mean amazing human beings anyway let's get out on this one let's get back to the family and i'll catch you on the next one